Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and I've got some coloring to do today. This adorable little turtle, so sweet. And this is actually in a coloring book. And I've told you guys in the last couple of weeks that I have a coloring book class coming up that's going to launch on Christmas Day. And a coloring book artist talked to me on Instagram, and her name is Amy. She's in Australia. And she does lovely drawings on her Instagram, but she uses AI, just so you know, to create the line work for these, is my understanding. She had some health issues, and this just helps her turn those drawings that she does into line work. So just get that out of the way right off the bat, because you guys know how I feel about AI, all these people who aren't artists, just kind of making it happen. But hers are really cute. Her drawings are adorable. I'll link to her Instagram down below. But she sent me two of her coloring books since we had talked about me doing a coloring book class. And I thought I'd color one of them up just so I'd have the excuse to show you her coloring books too. And I am going to do something from this coloring book I'm flipping through in the class. I haven't decided which one. So if you have one you want to weigh in on, let me know. So for the turtle, I decided to pull out the combo hex chart and pull from both mediums. So, you know, some of them are blue greens, some of them are yellow greens. You could decide what kinds of colors you envision and grab those colors out of your bin of markers. In this case, I decided I wanted something desaturated because there's in a, in a real uh, turtle, there's brownish colors, there's greenish colors, there's grayish colors. And this whole section kind of has the colors I need. So I pulled out some of the bluish and the brownish and the whatevers from both brands because you can use them together. Alcohol markers are alcohol markers and you can easily switch from one to the other. Now, a lot of people don't have both, but if you have even a few of one brand, you don't have to worry about sticking with those. Just mix them with the other ones that you have. And the combo hex chart helps to pull out the colors from both brands together. So that's one use of it. If you're you know, trying to pick out, I wanted a, kind of a large range to pull from. I wasn't sure exactly what I needed, but I just grabbed all the ones from that area. And you can see the lids on the Copic ones look very desaturated. The lids on the Ohuhu do not look saturated. So just know that you can't tell from looking at the caps on an Ohuhu marker what color is going to come out the other end. There's also ones that are very dark colors that have very light caps. It's just the weirdest thing. And in order to have a, a chart that covers all of that and will show you all of it, I do have an Ohuhu only hex chart. And it's got the 300 and, what is it, 320 in the Honolulu set. It doesn't have all the colors, but it has the 320. And so you can use that to choose your colors from and be able to see what they what they are and the hex chart gives you colors in a hexagon around the central color so you can have a whole bunch of different options for colors to blend with or alternate colors if you want a color that's like something but it's not exact then you can look on a hex chart and find it what i'm doing here is going back and forth between um, kind of warm and desaturated toward the nose into more bluish green and yellowish green at the top where the light's going to hit. Whenever the light is going to, you know, touch an object, those colors are generally going to be more saturated. And I mean, if it's a desaturated color, it, it'll maybe saturated a little bit, but you can see it's going from kind of a brownish color up into more bluish as it gets toward the back of the head, if the light is coming from above. You'll see that more clearly in some of the rest of the coloring. So I was playing really with temperature as I went through this, temperature and value, so that I could get toward lighter colors. And when you're working with two brands, you have even more colors to choose from. But why the combo chart? Like, what is the deal with that? Well. There are people who have both brands, or at least some from both brands, or people who follow tutorials in one medium and they want to use the other. And this chart puts all the colors together. So as you saw, you can see all the greens at the same time. 
and then be able to make your own decisions about what colors come from them. So for this snout, I looked up like what a, a real sea turtle has and the no nostrils kind of join and then there's a dark spot down the split of the lip that gets lighter as it gets down to the mouth and two dark spots kind of going out underneath of the eyes. So I'll be creating that and then a light color in between which needs to be a little bit of a brownish kind of a color because of, you know, like when you're looking at a picture of one, you'll be able to see different things about what kind of colors there are. Now, this is a coloring book. Nobody needs to worry and stress out about trying for realism, except for if you're me. So here I was looking for which colors are going to be more like a tan color, which is what I saw in pictures around the nose. So I went and grabbed that color. You, you can see it's more brownish. And that means it's desaturated and it's warm. So if it was more bluish, it would be cool. And, you know, if it was intense, it was like a bright green, intense green, then it's going to be more saturated. And in the coloring book class that's coming up, I am going to be talking a lot more about warm and cool and those kind of things, but not in a like art geek kind of way because I am an art geek and for a lot of my classes we go into all kinds of depth into color theory but for coloring book artists I just want to be able to give them some tools in their tool belt to think about and so we'll do a little bit of color theory and looking at color ways as well as shading and blending and all the normal coloring stuff and then I'll have some more advanced examples for people who already have some of those basics. They just want a little bit more and we'll do things like fabric folds and faces. And the class will be in alcohol markers as well as in um, color pencil and watercolor. So it'll be an exposure to other mediums. Even if you don't use them, you'll get to see how those things play out in those mediums in case you decide you want to someday. And it means I just have one class for everything for coloring books. Now this is a sharpener that I put in my gift guide a couple weeks ago. Was it a couple weeks ago? I don't know when you're watching this. I don't know when it's going to be scheduled for, but anyway. Uh, I had a gift guide and it's still up if you want to go chop the gift guide. And this is the three-hole pencil sharpener. And I do it over a little plastic bag that I just keep on my desk. And it's a little itty-bitty thing, so don't lose it. But it's just a few bucks and it gets your pencil so sharp. It is kind of amazingly sharp. And this will work with some of the thicker pencils as well. There's three different holes. And I kind of use a combination of two of them. You can kind of try them in combination and see which one gives you the right length of point versus the sharpness. That sort of thing. So here I'm adding colored pencil on top of what I've already colored in marker. Now you generally don't want to do marker over the pencil because it's just going to eat it away and be gone. But doing your pencil at the end tends to help that to uh, pop to the surface. So even on that black ink of the printer, I was able to draw over to put some you know, like glassy eye looking kind of colors with the yellow over top of the black. And this is a Copic Acrea pen. I got these recently. There's a couple of videos on my channel with Acrea in the title if you want to go see them. It's basically a paint pen and it's made by Copic, which means they're intending it to be used over alcohol marker and they do work pretty well. Um, one of the things that happened on this one, I was trying to use it and then see if I could color over it and the alcohol marker in some cases I used it a little too soon and it moved the, the, the paint. It didn't dry completely so don't do that. But I wasn't super successful in getting color over top of it. Just a little bit. You can barely glaze if you need to color over something. Darker colors will go better and the Ohuhu covered it better than the Copic did. Not sure why that is, but I was using, I guess, darker colors when I did the Ohuhu. But the pencil that I'm using is a cool one here because I'm working in a lot of the darker areas and I had a cool dark pencil. And in the brighter areas where I was blending, I was using a warm and very light bright color. Like I think it was apple green. And you can shift color as well with your pencils because everything is getting brighter as I'm using the pencil because the pencil has partial opacity to it. So there's adding a couple more sparkles to the eye with the Acrea pen. 
which they come in a whole bunch of different colors, but if you just have the white and the gold and the silver, I think you'd be very happy because the gold and the silver are super shiny and I really like those. Now I'm not going to color the whole thing here because it's Black Friday week and we're all busy, but I did decide to transition from greens into something that would be more of the color that's in the eyes because then it's going to kind of coordinate with that, as well as be a different color for the underside of the turtle. And I'm making it a little more brownish orangey than a real turtle, because it maybe would be a little more yellow. But I'm just picking from the combo hex chart again to grab a couple of colors. I think both of these happen to be Ohuhu colors. But just, you know, kind of making my shading go along the lines that are created already in the drawing. It's one of the good things about coloring books is that they already have that. Now, a bunch of the ones in this book, as well as the Pomeranian book, have shading already in them. You can see this shading down there on the bottom of the belly. And it's not a lot of shading, but there's some areas of shading. So you can kind of get an idea of where shading might be if you get coloring books that have that shading already drawn into them and just use your darker colors in those areas. For the underside, I decided to put the darker colors around the cracks in between each of the plates. Whereas on the top, I put white in between the cracks. So just to have a little difference in there, I didn't have a clear reference and I wasn't going to go look up a second turtle. For the underside, I just knew it was more on the yellowish side and then used a little bit more color to blend with. And then the legs I finished up after that. Same technique as the rest of the turtle. But I did add a little bit of this yellow gold color at the bottom of each of the fins. Because you would end up potentially seeing a little bit of that yellow brown color coming up from the bottom. Underneath of the edge of the, uh, the fins. So there's my happy little turtle. So yes, you can use your mediums together. Uh, go check out the gift guide and I'll put a link to the class as well if you're interested in the coloring book class. The lessons are going to start on Christmas Day because when I was a kid, I loved doing art with all my new crayons and my new everything on Christmas Day. So that's when we're going to launch all the lessons, but you can purchase the class ahead or go ask for a gift card for the class. All right, I will see you guys on Friday for the Big Black Friday news. I'll let you know how things are going to work. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.